The noise source block acts as a source of thermal noise. In this example, we will have a user-defined bit sequence connected to an NRZ pulse generator, which will represent the data signal. We'll, we will be combining a noise source with our data signal to see how the noise will affect it. We will then modulate the data signal with a carrier signal, use a photodiode to receive the optical signal, and then send it through a low-pass filter to extract the data signal. We will then check the eye diagram to see how the added noise affects the eye diagram. Calculating the project with initial values, we can see that the noise doesn't show on our encoded signal and that the eye diagram looks perfect as well. This is because the power of our noise is relatively low compared to the signal strength. Double-clicking the noise brings up the noise source properties. In this window, we can modify the noise power to make the value larger. Calculating the project and clicking the visualizer, we can see all of the signals. Selecting signal plus noise will show us the signal added to the noise. This time we can actually see the noise that is added to our NRZ pulse. Clicking the bit error rate analyzer, we can view the eye diagram, and this time the eye diagram is slightly noisier and has minimal distortion. Double clicking on the noise block and going into the noise window, we can select add noise to signal. Running it and going into the visualizer, we can see this simply adds the noise and the signal together, and this time the display is one signal instead of being displayed as two separate signals. In the properties of the noise source, we can select PSD, which allows us to choose the power spectral density instead of average power. If we were to leave the rest of the settings the same and calculate the project, we will see that the power of the noise is so high that it drowns out the rest of our signal. This is because we went from having an average power of 10 dBm to having a spectral power density of 10 dBm. Typically in PSD mode, you would expect to have lower values of noise power. Changing the noise power to negative 91 dBm, we notice that we are starting to see the shape of our NRZ pulse and the noise is less overwhelming. Changing the noise power to negative 101 dBm, we can see that the signal resembles the NRZ pulse more clearly and the signal to noise ratio is greater. Looking at the eye diagram, we can see that it has less noise and less distortion. In the noise source properties, we can also change the units of power. Changing the units to watts will show us the equivalent power of noise in watts. In the simulation window, we can change the sample rate by clicking beside the box. Pressing evaluate will show us what the sample rate is currently defined as. Sample rate is currently defined by the global parameter sample rate. It can also be changed to be dependent on any other layout parameter or even a function. Double clicking anywhere on the workspace, we can see and change any of the global parameters including sample rate. Going back into the noise source and pressing evaluate script, we can now see the new value of sample rate. In the random numbers tab, deselecting generate random seed will make the generator not use a randomly generated seed to create the random noise and will instead use a defined random seed index to generate the noise. This means if we run the random noise generator multiple times, the noise generator will be exactly the same because the random seed always stays the same every time it is run.